Hello students, today uh, I am thinking that I will discuss specific heat, enthalpy and relation between enthalpy and internal energy, those things I am going to discuss today. We know that heat, heat is directly proportional to the change in temperature, but I need to give some comment on this because here I need to put some restriction, I need to impose, I need to impose some restriction for this equation Q varies delta T. This is not for an heat reservoir, mind it, this relation is not applicable for heat reservoir. Second criteria is, second condition is for a given mass of a particular substance, clear? It means for iron, it will be dif for iron, it will be different with respect to copper. So that is why I am telling you for a given mass of a particular substance, and uh, it is true for a it is true for a true for a particular mass, clear? It means if you calculate, if you uh, calculate heat for a 5 gram of iron, okay, and again you are you are going to calculate the change in heat or something like this uh, for uh, 10 gram of iron, then he, uh, calculated heat will be different. So that is why I am I have written that for a given mass of a particular substance. And that is, uh, it is not invalid if you are going to calculate heat for uh, iron then copper. So in that case, the uh, calculated heat will be different, right? So that is why I have written for a given mass for a particular substance, clear? Now, so Q varies as delta T. So when so that is why I need to put a constant right here, right? So now, so Q varies as delta T equal to C and this C, this constant, it is, it, it is a proportional constant. And it depends on the nature of nature and mass of the substance. That if, so, this constant will be dif, uh, if the, it will be different for iron and copper. Okay, it can be same for both iron and copper. So that is why I am telling you this proportional constant depends on the nature and mass of the substance. Is that clear? Good. So, now I am going to write the differential form for this equation. dq dq dt equal to c, clear? So now, if I am going to calculate this proportional constant at constant pressure, then it will be cp then dq dt at constant pressure. For CV, dq dt and constant volume. So here this notation is uh, indicates the partial differentiation. It, 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 it is used for partial differentiation because we are differentiating uh, Q with respect to T but at constant pressure. Here at constant volume. Clear? So, that is why I am using partial uh, notation for partial differentiation. Now, what does it mean by Cp and Cv? So, for a unit mass, Cp and Cv are specific heat for the given substance under constant volume and pressure respectively. Again, I am telling you, for a for unit mass, Cp and Cv are specific heat 
for the given substance under constant volume and pressure respectively. So, clear? Now, for one mole substance, CVM or CV bar is used for molar heat capacity at constant volume, whereas CPM or CP bar is used for molar heat capacity at constant pressure. And CVM or CV bar indicates molar heat capacity at constant volume. Is that clear? I think it is clear. Now, I am going to uh, discuss how enthalpy a state function is like how I will bring enthalpy in thermodynamics and why it is required, why th enthalpy is required because scient uh, scientist uh, gave in another new state function that is enthalpy, but wh what is the requirement for this that you need to learn, then you need to know why why you why you will um, why you are going to read why you are going to learn enthalpy why it is required what is the requirement for uh, a new state function in thermodynamics now i am going to write the first law of thermodynamics that is the differential form a form is du equal to dq plus dw here I am not going to uh, use the Descartes form, but rather I can write that Q and W path function, U is state function. There is a very good practice. Whenever you, yeah, whenever you you write the, you are going to write the uh, first law of thermodynamics. So if you in, in the side note, if you mention that u and w path function, u state function, that is very good practice. Believe me, that is very good practice. It is clear. Now, integration on constant pressure. Now, we are going to integrate at constant pressure. I think it is clear. So, because uh, if you integrate del du, then you will get delta u. But if when uh, you integrate on dq, then you are going to get q, the absolute value. You are not going to get delta q. That is completely invalid. I already discussed in my previous lecture of thermodynamics. Watch it. Delta u means u2 minus u1 so it is the difference between two state final and initial now i am going to rearrange the above equation Now, this u plus pv, u plus pv, the sum of internal energy and pv work done, that is enthalpy, h, that is enthalpy, a new state function. Here, uh, I introduced uh, a new state function, that is enthalpy. So, it becomes h2 minus h1 equal to qp or delta h equal to qp right so or i can write da differential form will be dh equal to dqp now i can say that enthalpy is 
heat content see delta is equal to qp qp means heat content at constant pressure that is equal to change in enthalpy right so you can define enthalpy in this way that is heat content at constant pressure so it is you can say heat content at constant pressure so that is enthalpy now again i am rewriting the first law of thermodynamics that is differential form of first first law of thermodynamics that is du equal to dq plus dw it means du equal to dq minus pdv when a process uh, is carried out under constant volume then dv will be zero when v is constant then the differential form will be zero so now it becomes du equal to dq so if you integrate at constant volume then what you will get delta u so delta u equal to qv that means it internal energy internal energy uh, you can define internal energy in such a way that is heat content at constant volume heat content at constant volume i think it is clear so enthalpy is heat content at constant pressure and internal energy is heat content at con change in internal energy you can define in such a way that is heat content at constant volume where uh, here u h these are the state function sorry uh these are the state function so here cyclic integral integral of u will be zero cyclic integral of in dh will be zero cyclic integral means because u and h are state function so when initial and final st uh, state states are same in in cyclic integral cyclic uh, process so the this is a so initial and final both are same initial and final states are same in cyclic process in that case the change in internal energy and change in uh, enthalpy will be equal to zero clear now i am going to give another relation between Uh, i'm going to uh, present another rep, uh, equation which which is the relation between enthalpy and internal energy let's see so a is equal to u plus pv clear so delta is equal to delta u plus delta pv i think it is clear so now delta h equal to delta u plus p2 v2 minus p1 v1 if for a given process under a specific temperature that is t then and for initial initial state number of moles are n1 and for in the final state number of moles are n2 and both are in the uh, you, you you are going to consider the number of moles for gaseous substance so n1 g n2 g clear now we know that pv equal to nrt clear so now p2 v2 becomes n2 rt and p1 v1 becomes n1 rt now rt n2 minus n1 so delta u equal to delta ng change in 
moles in gas for, uh, for gaseous substance rt so delta h equal to delta u plus delta ng rt clear so from this equation you can say that when delta ng greater than 0 then delta h now i am going to ask a question then whether it delta h will be greater than or lesser uh, less than delta u try to think delta h equal to delta u plus delta ng rt and here when delta ng greater than 0 just think delta ng greater than 0 then obviously delta is greater than delta u when delta ng less than 0 then delta h less than delta u when delta ng equal to 0 then delta h will be equal to delta u clear now uh, uh, I am going to give a question if you uh, do the, if you do the problem by yourself then concept will be clear ok so let us start to solve the question here this is the question so now you, you need to calculate delta H minus delta U for the formation of carbon monoxide from its element at 298 Kelvin and it is given that R equal to 8.314 joule mole inverse Kelvin inverse. Now, carbon, you need to form carbon monoxide from its element that is carbon. So, carbon that is solid plus half O2, O2 is gas equal to CO which is also gas. Now, when you are going to calculate the delta ng for this you need to consider only the gaseous substance that means you can consider carbon monoxide and oxygen but not ca carbon because it is solid so here number of moles of carbon monoxide is one and number of moles of oxygen is half so one minus half equal to half now you, we know that delta is equal to delta u uh, plus delta ngrt now delta h minus delta u equal to delta ng rt so delta ng is half r is 8.314 and temperature is 298 Kelvin. So, see what is the unit of half that is mole, what is the unit of a R that is joule mole inverse Kelvin inverse and what is the uh, unit of temperature that is Kelvin. So, see Kelvin Kelvin gets cancelled out, mole mole gets cancelled out. So, half into 8.314 into 298 let's calculate so it is 1238 point 78 joule and it is clear now so answer will be b this is very easy problem i think you have under, you understood okay now the question is why why enthalpy is required why a new new state function why it is required new state function is, was introduced okay why it was introduced in thermodynamics clear so can you think by yourself try to think why it is required because uh, already I told you that enthalpy is heat content at constant press pressure and uh, internal energy is heat content change in internal energy is the heat content at constant volume fine now 
from these two equation you are you should get the answer okay you should get the answer but now i am going to say i am going to uh, discuss uh, this so the mode of interest of using thermodynamics by chemist is is to assess the spontaneity of a reaction spontaneity of a physical or chemical proce uh, process under a given set of physical condition so again i am saying the mode of interest of using thermodynamics by chemist is to assess the spontaneity of a physical or chemical process under a given set of physical co condition so main object uh, object is to uh, judge we need to judge spontaneity of its process clear spontaneity of a process to assess the spontaneity uh, of a process state functions are subjected to utilize utilize first internal energy is a we know internal energy is a function of temperature for ideal gas and it demands the condition of constant volume obviously because we know delta u equal to uh, qv so internal energy demands the condition of constant volume and pre, uh, long back that time scientists thought that uh, uh, if internal energy is negative that means th uh, that is exothermic process and internal energy if change in internal energy is positive that it, then then it is endothermic process process that time uh, people uh, thought that only exothermic process only exothermic processes are, are spontaneous Endo, endothermic processes are not spontaneous so f that time that time uh, it was believed that only exothermic process is uh, spontaneous and endothermic processes are not spontaneous so to judge this phenomena you need to uh, you need to have a state function like internal energy but it demands the condition of constant volume and if you think that most of the reactions are carried out under constant pressure not constant volume because when you are uh, you are you are doing any reaction in test tube and for and for the reaction you need uh, you need to heat the uh, uh, mixture okay then volume will not be constant volume will change but the uh, pressure will be constant because if it is open system pressure is constant okay we know our atmospheric pressure is 1 atm so clear so pressure is constant it, and it is very easy to uh, carry out any process carry out any process at constant pressure so but inter, uh, inter, change in internal energy demands condition of constant volume and it is to be noted here the most of the process in practice are carried out under constant pressure as a matter of fact a new state state function is to be is to be developed which will function under constant pressure and that is enthalpy because change in enthalpy it is heat content and constant pressure so job is done yes because we we, we have the a state function that is enthalpy uh, which will function under constant pressure and that time uh, spontaneity of a process was judged by the sign of change in enthalpy if ch in change in enthalpy uh, was negative then it is spontaneous process uh, th that is exothermic and if it is positive then process is not feasible process is not spontaneous okay clear but that is not true but uh, that time it was believed okay i think it is clear now we are going to uh, set up a relation between cp and cv that means heat uh, molar heat uh, heat capacity at specific heat at constant pressure and specific heat at constant volume volume we know uh, we have already we have already to, uh, told that yes 
CP is DQ DT P and CV is DQ DT V. So DQ P is DH and DQ V will, will be DU. So this equation uh, is going to take the form that is DH DT P and DU DT V. It is very it is clear. I think it is clear now. So CV is DH DT P and CV is DU DT V. Clear? Now we know that H equal to U plus PV. Is it clear? Fine. And CP is P. Now DH plus uh, sorry u plus pv so here just i am uh, substituting the value of h by u plus pv dt now it, it is del u del t p plus del Is it clear at constant pressure? Now, del u del t is del u del t is C V and as p is constant, so we can re rewrite this as d d v d t. Now, what is the value of this one? So we know P V equal to R T. If I con if I consider that number of moles is one, when n equal to one, so differential form of this equation will be P D V plus V T P equal to R D T. Now, at constant pressure, when pressure is constant, then D P will be zero. So PDV plus zero equal to RDT. Now DVDT equal to R by P. So CV plus P times R by P. So CV plus R. So CP equal to CV plus R. So CP minus CV equal to R. Is that clear? It is very simple. Now, from this equation, I can say that R is always positive quantity. That is, uh, 8.314 uh, joule mole inverse scale inverse, or in liter atmosphere scale, uh, liter atmosphere unit that is 0 0.082 uh, liter at ATM mole inverse scale inverse. But so, CP minus CV is always positive. So it means CP greater than CV. Clear? Now, can you tell me why CP greater than CV? So, this equation tells that CP greater than CV. Now, can you give me any molecular level approach, molecular level explanation why CP greater than CV? Now, I am going to give. Just listen carefully. So, in case of CV, entire heat supplied is being utilized to increase the molecular chaos Be because here PV work done is not possible in CV PV work done is not possible because volume is constant so you are not in the, uh, the this gas jet with piston so change in position of piston will not be will not going to happen right so there is no PV work done no PV work done. So the the heat heat supplied is being utilized to increase the molecular chaos, which is responsible to increase the term that is half mv square varices t. The kinetic energy will increase, the velocity of gas molecules will increase, but there will be no PV work done. 
so in cv no pv work done clear so as volume remains constant as v remains constant but in case of cp what happens in case of cp to release pv work done to surroundings and again due to expansion average distance among the gas molecule will increase and to overcome the intermolecular attraction heat is being utilized okay so that we, that means heat is being utilized to increase the molecular chaosness clear so extra thing is this one so in cp pv work done is pv work done is happening but in case of cv there is no pv work done and that th this is the uh, molecular level explanation about why cp greater than cv okay now i'm going to give you another problem so uh, try to uh, explain try to explain try to solve this problem by yourself uh, question is when cp equal to cv when cp is equal to cv is possible think by yourself okay i will explain this Uh, problem in the in my next video so wait for this so try to think that when cp equal to cp that is very uh, it, it it will it is a very unique uh, at 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 a very unique condition cp equal to cv okay try to think when cp equal to cv okay so today i am going to end uh, end here